All right, coming up on the show, the Red Sox are insane. So the Red Sox beat the Yankees again last night. That completed the four-game sweep. That moved their AL East lead to nine and a half games. Nine and a half games over a team with a record of 68 and 41. Going into yesterday, the Red Sox were 18 games ahead of the team that was in first place in the AL Central. The Indians are leading the AL Central by nine games over the second place Twins. David Price pitched great last night. Mixed his pitches beautifully. I don't care that for a minute he ended up on the hook for the loss. Look, if you're the Yankees, you simply cannot walk three guys in the ninth inning. I don't care what your lead is. When you're playing a team like the Red Sox that's that good, you cannot walk batters. Aroldis Chapman absolutely got what he deserved. After the game, manager Alex Cora said about his team, quote, they play the game the right way. They play until the end. That's fun to watch, close quote. Ah, uh, yeah. Even Bill Belichick was at the game last night. Maybe he needs an alteration on the size of that lid. Do I think the Red Sox will ultimately end up nine and a half games better than the Yankees? No. I expect the Yankees to make a small run at some point during the final month and a half of the season, but make no mistake about it, this division is over, wrapped up. The Red Sox might not lose 10 games the rest of the season. So let's project a little bit. Boston currently on pace for 113 wins. 19 teams since the year 2000 won 100 games in the regular season and only three of those teams went on to win the World Series. The 09 Yankees, the 2016 Cubs, and last year's Houston Astros. Now with that being said, only five teams have won 110 games or more in a season. Three of those five went on to win the World Series. The last team to win it all after winning more than 110 games in a season was the 1998 Yankees. Red Sox, as I said, currently on pace for 113 wins. Based on trends, it would behoove them to win at least 110 games. Also over the weekend, the Pro Football Hall of Fame inducted their class of 2018. Most notable from a Patriots perspective was the induction of wide receiver Randy Moss. Moss thanked Robert Kraft, thanked Dante Scarnecchia. And then once he finished talking about the Patriots, he mentioned the Titans and 49ers. Then went back at the very end of his speech to specifically mention Bill Belichick. Thought it was sort of an awkward move, but I thought it was also the ultimate sign of respect. Save the best for last kind of thing. Moss said in part about Belichick, quote, I want to thank you for being a friend when it wasn't always about football, close quote. That reiterated to me that Bill Belichick is better at managing people than you might come to believe if you just come out of watching one of his press conferences. All right, take your pick. Who's more likely to induct Tom Brady when he goes into the Hall of Fame one day. Alex Guerrero or the field? I'm going Alex Guerrero. Alex Guerrero is like a family member to him. He's the godfather of one of his children, a business partner. He's not a football guy, but he has directly affected his play on the field. I think William McGinnis is an option. I think Robert Kraft is an option. I think his dad could be an option. But if I had to say right now, I say Alex Guerrero is the guy that inducts him into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We also did some speculating on the radio show this weekend who would induct Bill Belichick. We narrowed down a short list. I'll go Nick Saban one, Ernie Adams two, Robert Kraft three. I'll also give you three long shot wild cards. Lawrence Taylor, Bon Jovi, or somebody affiliated with the Navy or some branch of the military. All right, take your pick. Which TV show about a gang is better? Sons of Anarchy or Peaky Blinders? They're the same show. Peaky Blinders is just set in a different country about 90 years earlier. They're a different type of gangster, but I'm going to go Peaky Blinders. Look, the big thing here, Sons of Anarchy just became a chore at the end. Too gruesome, too violent. It lost its way towards the end. I literally had to get myself up to watch an episode. I mean, it was a great show most of the way. Peaky Blinders is still ongoing. So many similarities between the two shows, but I'm going Peaky Blinders. I give them the edge. All right, my lock of the day. I'm taking the Yankees. Minus one and a half tonight over the White Sox on the road. I think the Yankees bounce back. They should have won that game last night. They're going to be pissed. They'll probably still make the playoffs, and I hope they see the Red Sox. But I'll take them tonight to beat the White Sox. Minus one and a half. That's my lock of the day. Have a good one. Well, as you know, I'm not on Snapface and all that, so I don't really get those.